Hey, what's up everybody? This is Anthony and the last time we were together, we started to build a website that will allow you to read your Gmail emails from the website using the Gmail API. So what we did was we went through the PHP quick start here under Gmail API and we literally just stepped through this tutorial. We copied this code over and we ran it from the command line. So now the goal is to take what we have, modify it a little bit so that you can do the same thing, however, you will not need to use your command line at all. It'll all be through the browser. So this is really the next step in programming is to take it from the command line to an interactive uh, UI. And that is really what the goal is today. So today we're gonna use uh, classes. So this is actually something that, I mean, if you're struggling to learn how to organize your code in classes, I'm gonna be using classes in PHP. And so even if you're not doing Gmail API stuff, uh, this will help you with your, your structure, your code structure. Uh, so let's start by taking the index.php file, which is literally a copy and paste from this quick start. And we're just gonna start modifying and adding some files. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to copy this file here and we're going to paste it. Let's just paste it in the same folder. So we're gonna have some duplicates here and then just do it again. Uh, paste it one more time. So now you've got three files. You've got your index, you've got your index zero, and you've also got your index one. We're gonna rename this second one here to connection. And then we'll rename this last one to, let's do, let's do Gmail. All right, so we're gonna modify these one at a time, but keep in mind for right now, they all have the exact same information. And we're gonna pick and choose what we want out of this code, and then we're gonna apply it to the the right file. So let's just start at the top here and we're going to you know enter down and so what we'll do is we're going to build a class right now so let's just start at the very very top and I think we called our program yo-yo right so we're gonna do yo-yo that's the name of my class probably not the most intuitive it should probably mean a little bit more but this is fun so who cares right so let's just do uh, a class, we're gonna call it yo-yo. This is gonna be the entry point of our, our website. So it's index.php. And we're gonna create a constructor. So if you're not familiar with what a constructor is, the constructor is what is called every time you create a class in, in the instantiation. So this is how you do it in PHP construct. And then inside of this, any code that you type, the moment you instantiate that class, is when it's going to execute it. So you'll want to instantiate variables here and um, call some default methods that you, or yeah, methods that you want to call. And a lot of times it'll call some private me methods. Um, for this, we're going to call the includes because every time you create this class, you want to include some sort of external file or something. So that's all we're going to put here. Um, the tough thing about building a program this way is it doesn't really start to make sense until the end. But bear with me, I'll try to kind of explain as we go through how this is going to work. So uh, public function, public meaning we're going to be able to access it from other files. So honestly, uh, for the includes, I could do private function. Let's just do that, private function, because I'm only calling this particular one from this, from within this class. And then for the includes, we're going to include, so actually let's just start taking what we need, right? So we'll do uh, require... There's our include, we're gonna require that. So now when I create the class here, I'm going to require the auto load. And you know what, I'm also going to include the connection, .php. So now when you create this file, I'm sorry, when you load your web page and your uh, an instance of this class is created, it's going to instantiate both of those, um, these lines here. So we'll start there. Next, let's create a function. We'll call it go, public function go. And that's really just going to be like um, literally making it do what it wants to do. It's going to run it on the server, render my code, and then display it on the screen down to the client. So we'll do that. Now, what do we want to actually do? So we want to create a connection. So once we pull up our website, we want to be able to connect to Gmail. So that's the first thing we want to do is we're going to say, let's call it con equals new connection. Now keep in mind, we have some other files on the screen here 
that are going to apply here. So this connection here is going to be this connection, and we're going to create a class in here called connection. So for now, it doesn't really mean anything, but it will. And we're going to say if the uh, connection is connected. So if, if you actually connected to your Gmail account successfully, the first time you've called this, then do some stuff, right? So we'll get into what we're going to do in a moment. But if you're not connected, meaning if it's the first time that you've actually navigated to your website and you haven't actually provided permissions yet, then we're going to say return, let's say uh, connection, get unauthenticated data. Now I'm intentionally making this very, very explicit and explanatory so that it'll make a little bit of uh, sense, it'll be easier to follow. And all right, so return unauthentic unauthenticated data. So that's all that this is going to do here is it's going to say if <clears throat> I've logged into my website and it already has the credentials that it needs to access my email, then do stuff. Otherwise, we're going to say, give me a screen which will allow me to provide that, that permission. Uh, so we're not going to use the CLI anymore. That can go away. And so let's go ahead and just um, start typing in here what it's actually going to do when we go to the website. So right now, because we have a class on the screen, it's actually not going to execute this code until we, until we instantiate the class. So let's do that. Let's say yo yo equals new yo yo. And if you notice the way I'm doing this, I'm trying to make it so that my variable name here is the same as the class name. The only difference is going to be the capitalization at the beginning. That's kind of a standard that is, you know, a lot of people use for coding. Not really required, but it's easier to follow that way. So we're going to echo, let's do the beginning of our website. Doc type HTML, and then we'll say HTML, and then we'll echo yo-yo, go. So then we'll close out our HTML here. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. And so this is literally building my website in PHP. I'm going to have my beginning tag, my end tag. We're going to ignore things right, right now, such as uh, headers, titles, um, body, all of the other fundamental things that you need to have. We're going to ignore that for now because that is not the focus of this video. The focus is just to get our emails going. So we've got our open and our closed HTML, and then we call go, which is right here. And it's going to say, are you connected? Yes. If you are, then show me something. Otherwise, show me a screen that will allow me to authenticate. And that's really all that is. Um, that's really it for this. So the get client function here, that's going to be in the connection. Um, all the stuff down here, printing labels, that's going to be in the Gmail. So we can delete the rest of this stuff because we don't need it. So let's do that. Now this should be the only thing you have in your index.php. It's a lot cleaner, a lot easier to keep up with. So let's go ahead and move on to this part right here. If you are connected, then well, what do you want to do? You want to reach out and get some data, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say require once, and I'm using these the include and the require and the require once differently um, just so that you can see that there are options for you. There are different ways that you can use them or different reasons why you would. And I would just say go to the PHP um, website to figure out what the differences are. But I'll say require once, and we're going to say gmail.php. Now keep in mind that's the file that we have here and we're going to require it in here so that we can start using the class that's going to be created later, right? So the class that we're going to create later is going to be, uh, we'll say Gmail mail equals new uh, Gmail. And now for this one, we're going to go ahead and send in a, a variable. So what is, what is it? Good thing to send in. Well, we're going to need our, not necessarily the connection, but we're going to need the client because in order to actually access our email, we need the client. So we're going to send in the uh, con and then we'll, we'll create a method in there called get client, get client. And yeah, that's, 
that's pretty much it. That makes sense. So from here, we're going to say return. Um, I think last time we read the, the labels. So we'll say read labels. All right. So that is it for this file. Literally, that, that should be it. If there are any errors, we'll come back and fix them later. But for now, we're just going to save this and we're going to move on to the, the next file. So we're saying new connection if con is connected. So let's go over here to the, the connection file. So remember, this is just a copy of index. And what we're going to do is we're going to start building out this class so that it starts to make sense and we can use it in our index. So we'll say class connection and then there's our end class and then everything below that we're going to start picking from it. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a um, constructor, public function, underscore, underscore, construct. And well, what did I say? Um, did I say we're going to pass anything into here? I don't think we are for this one. I think it was the Gmail one. Yeah, so there's nothing to pass in. If I was, I would pass it right into here. Uh, but for now, we don't actually need that. So we're going to say this credentials. Now, I think if you recall, we said credentials.json was what we actually pulled from the quick start. Uh, we're also going to have a client here, and we're, we're going to figure out whether or not we've connected to this before. So we're going to say this client, meaning this instance of this class, this client is going to equal a new client. So we're going to create the client. So everything that I'm putting here with parentheses at the end between the index and the connection, I need to make sure that I actually create these methods down below. So let's start with just kind of building out the methods. So we've already said um, get client, get client right there. Uh, there's going to be open and close parentheses, and so we're going to put some code in there. Uh, we've got another one. We're going to say public function uh, get credentials. So we will need to access these credentials up here at the top. And the way to do that is you just make a getter. So that's that's a getter. Uh, we'll have public function is connected. That was another one. Same thing, we're going to work on that code later. And everything inside the brackets there is going to have code that's actually going to do something. But for right now, we're just going to build this shell out and then we'll start adding the code later. Uh, next is public function get, I spelled that wrong, didn't I? Uh, get unauthenticated data. I think that's what we said in the other file as well. So there's another one. Um, credentials in browser. So public function credentials in browser is going to be a, a method that you will need if you've accessed it for the first time and then the and Gmail or Google returns back a code in the browser like we did the last time. So instead of using the, um, the command line like last time, this is where we actually pull it from the browser and we're able to continue without any issues at all. The last one that we need here is public function uh, create client, right? Create client. And that is here, create client. These are the only methods you need in this, and that is all for that. Um, the next one we're going to look at is the Gmail. And so Gmail is actually going to be easy as well because we've got, what, one thing going on in the Gmail .php, which is reading labels. So we can actually make this one more comprehensive in the future. But for right now, it's literally just class Gmail. We're going to have a constructor, public function, underscore, underscore, construct. With This time we're sending the client in, if you recall. Uh, what else do we need? We need to read the labels, right? Public function, read labels. And that is it. So we will continue this in the next video. But for right now, just make sure you have this structure. And what we're going to do is we're going to start peeling this code apart, plugging it into places. And after we plug it into here, it's going to work the exact same way that it did before, except you're not going to need to use the command line at all. So um, hopefully you're kind of getting an idea of how to use classes as well. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, post them in the comment section below. Um, but yeah, that is it for right now. Uh, episode three, we're going to continue this. So subscribe to get notified when it's ready. Later. Bye.